Number one is being saved. Number two is being spirit-filled. Number three is being sanctified, which means to be set apart from sin, separated from sin. Now, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians. Looking at chapter 4, verse 3. And we're going to read, I believe, through verse, yeah, yeah, we look verse 3 through verse 7. Now it says this, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that is that you, now watch this, that you abstain from sexual immorality. What is the will of God? Live holy. It's going to get so simple in a second. How do I know what the will of God is? Number one, you must be saved. Number two, you must be spirit filled. Number three, you must live holy. Why? If you're not saved, you're not reading this word, therefore God's not speaking to you. Number two, if you're not spirit-filled, you may belong to God, but you're not governed by God. Number three, you must be sanctified, set apart from sin. Why? Because when you're living in sin, it clouds your judgment from obeying God's word. Because you're living in sin, you're already disobeying God's word, therefore it's hard to obey when it comes to his will. His will is what? Being saved, being spirit-filled, and now being sanctified or set apart. Verse 4, that each of you know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know God. Those that don't know God do not govern their lives in holiness. They are free to do whatever their lustful desires and passions allow them to do. They are, they are not governed by what God says. So we're looking at, we started at verse 3, look at verse 4, and I look at verse 5. Actually, look at verse 4. For indeed, when we were with you, you were keeping to us in advance that you were going to suffer. Nope, I messed up right there. First chapter 4, there we go. I'm on track. Verse 4, that each of you know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know God. Verse 6, and that no man transgress and defraud his brother in the matter because the Lord is the avenger in all things, just as we also told you before and solely warn you. For God has not called us for the purpose of impurity, but the purpose of sanctification. God has not called you. He has not willed for you impurity, unholiness, but he's called you for holiness. And that's very important. We're going to see in a second why. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. A lot of scripture for a reason. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Now watch this. How do I know what the will of God is? This is so clear. Number one is to be saved. Number two is to be spirit filled. Number three is to be sanctified, set apart. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 17. Therefore, come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord. Now, let's back up. That way you can see the context. Let's start at verse 14. Do not be bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? Or what harmony has Christ with Belial? Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God. They should be my people. Therefore, come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord. That's so clear to me. He's saying, listen, you are not like them. Why are you still around them? Why are you in their midst? Why are you acting like them? Come out from among those that look nothing like me. Does that make sense? So number one is being saved. Number two is being spirit-filled, controlled, dominated by the Spirit of God. Number three is being sanctified, separated from sin. Number four, being submissive. Turn to um, James chapter four. Winding down. The clock is winding down. James 4, and, and, and I'm telling you, it's going to really free you up in a second. James 4, verse 7 says this. Submit, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Now, He's saying, first word is so key, submit. It's an act of your will. In order for us to know and follow the will of God in our life, we must be submissive. 
Go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. And be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. We're talking about being submissive again. I must now be subject not only to God, but also to my brother in Christ or sister in Christ. Now, talking about submission still, go to Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13, verse 17. Now watch this. How do I know the will of God for my life? We are getting so close. So let's start at verse 15. Through him then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is what? The fruit of lips that give thanks to his name. And do not neglect doing good and sharing for which such some sacrifices God is pleased. Obey, watch it, verse 17. Obey, to my being submissive, your leaders, watch this, and submit to them. For they keep watch over your souls as those who give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with grief, for this would be unprofitable for you. See, he's saying, you must be submissive, not only to God, but also those that are around you, brothers and sisters in Christ, also to leadership, those that rule over you, talking about being submissive. Now, submission stops when the leader is leading you outside of God's will. 